Hello and welcome. I'm Hayley from Creative Photo Folk and today let's take a peek behind the scenes at how I created my conceptual photograph, Dance of the Jacarandas, using photography and Photoshop. So Dance of the Jacarandas was created as an ode to the beautiful jacaranda trees that appear around my city every spring and just make it look so much more beautiful. Now, the big problem with jacarandas is that they're always in parks where there's lots of distractions. So, for example, in this particular park, we've got a bride over here on the right. We've got a pergola here. There's lots of like posts and fences and cars and things like that. So it's really hard to find the perfect jacaranda location. And in fact, when looking for the ideal location for this, I actually drove to every single big jacaranda park in my city and photographed every single one of them looking for the perfect location. And this is just something I like to do for fun sometimes. But of the all the different jacaranda places I visited, this one had a beautiful tunnel, which I really liked. So I used it as the base image for this photo. Now... This was actually taken as a panorama, so it's actually three different images stitched together in Photoshop, and that's just to make it bigger to be able to print it as a fine art print. And so once I had stitched all my images together, I then added a layer mask, which masked away all this distracting stuff. But then I had to obviously build a new background. So luckily I had to photograph these other locations because they came in handy to pop into these spaces. So yeah, this was from a different park entirely that I just popped into that space there. Then same park as this one, but different park from the main one over there on the left. Then a little tiny spot over here at the back and then the back. So it's not perfect. If you zoomed in and look at, looked at this, it would look pretty terrible, but... There's some stuff I do later on to fix that. But now it is looking better with all, at all those distractions. So the next thing I did, you can still see some posts and stuff in the background. I cleaned them out. Then I added like a little misty effect over here just by painting like a soft green across. And that actually went over the trees too. And it just gave it a little bit of a more magical quality. And then I changed the color to a little bit more of the blues. So this park didn't have many fallen flowers and I really wanted the ground to be covered with them as it would be later on in the season, but then obviously there'd be less in the trees. So again, this was created from the many jacaranda locations I visited and I just added them in little bits of sections, as you can see here. And it's funny, I have lots of people contacting me about where this picture was taken and I always have to say, well, it was taken here, but actually it's been quite heavily photoshopped. Then I added another one of those light streaks just to make even more of that seem a little bit softer and just kind of disguise the fact that there were some distractions around. Then I added curves and that's just pulled down a tiny bit just to darken the whole thing up, give it a little bit more contrast. Then I painted a yellow ball of light. See if I can show you that. Looked like that which would eventually drop in behind the subject. And that's just a little technique to draw the eye to the center of the image. So some of this stuff won't make sense now until I pop my subject in. That I just darkened where those trees were a little bit distracting and drawing the eye away. Then I actually have a shadow for my subject, so I might as well pop her in. So she looks like this, but she also has a bit more skirt, which will make sense for that shadow in a sec. So the girl is a little bit Frankensteined, as often my images are. So started off with this, and that looked like that. So it was shot in my backyard. Funnily enough, there was a little ring of mushrooms around me at the time, so I may have been standing in the middle of a fairy circle. And I've just done a few things to this image. Maybe if we were to zoom in. So I just blurred my skin a little bit. You probably can't even see that and did a little tiny bit of retouching, but that's not really visible to us right now. Then I added in a new arm from a different shot. So that look like that, but I liked this pose better. So I just thought that second arm kind of gave her a bit more dimension. Otherwise it's kind of like, where's her other arm? So that's what I did there. And then I made some, I just made her hair a little bit longer at the back there. I then brightened the white portions of the dress. Now this dress actually came from, there's this theatre company in my city who runs costume sales once every few years and it's the greatest thing because they have such amazing costumes. Now they are pretty shoddily made. This one is like tearing apart here because they are only whipped up for like a week long show. 
but they are also really cool. So it really suits my needs. You know, I can easily fix those things in Photoshop and never kind of wear it again. So that's where that costume came from. And I actually found it like the same week that I shot these images and it just so worked so beautifully. So that was luck of the draw there. And for her hair, I just had a wig that I found on eBay, which is um, white at the top and then pink and purple at the bottom. This one, I'm just darkening down her, the top of her to match the bottom of her. Sometimes I do that so then I can affect the whole image the same way. See, there we go. There we lighten her up entirely. And then I just change her colors to make her a little bit more magenta. Now, I wanted to give a bit more dimension and depth to this image. So what I did is I made a Photoshop brush in the shape of a jacaranda flower. So I teach you how to make brushes inside my Photoshop course, Exposing Illusions. But basically, I um, yeah made a brush that looked like a jacaranda flower. And you'll see a bit more of this coming in later on. But you'll see one popping up here and one popping up here. So what I did is made them really big and really blurry and put them close to camera. So it created that kind of depth you get with a um, wide aperture and then I popped in a bit more of the skirt so I thought this shape was a bit weird I wanted to make her look more like a jacaranda flower herself so I just gave her an extra bit of skirt from this image which was just flipped the other way then just affecting that bottom bit of the skirt that I'd popped in to make it match and then I brightened that up Next I did some cloning so you can see I fixed that little rip in her dress. Now I lightened up her dress and actually what I've done here is actually taken a jacaranda flower. I'll see if I can show you. I took an actual jacaranda flower and put it over her dress just to kind of tie it a little bit more to the theme that was going on. So that was what that looked like. Then I used a levels and just brightened up the whole image. I added a curve that was brought up to affect just her area and that helps draw the eye to the subject so she's not getting lost in the background. And then conversely, I added like a vignette so I darkened the corners and did not affect her. Next, I did not like how this side of the image was all quite busy with jacarandas but there was this bit of a blank space here. So this was probably the hardest bit of the image was putting in some new trees. That was from that image there. And I really, this was the layer mask. So I had to very carefully mask the trees so that it would look realistic when popped in. And there probably are a few spots I could have worked on a bit more, but that just meant that the eye was now going to the subject and not to this top left corner. Then um, I didn't really like how the sky was white, so I made it more blue. And I just did that by painting a selective color. So I just affected the whites and made them more blue and then masked that into that very corner. Next, I've added what I've called the rays. But again, that is just adding on um, some very soft painted colors and then bringing down the opacity just to give that more magical feel. Next, I've added in some falling flowers. So this, again, was using that Photoshop brush I created from a jacaranda flower and I just painted them all around the image. And I did this in several layers. So that's kind of my broad layer. And then I did one that were the flowers are a bit bigger and, and more blurry and close to camera. And that was another one. And once I painted them on, I blurred them a little bit to look like they were in the movement of falling. And then I changed the color. So the brush, for some reason, I actually painted as white. And then I just added a color layer that affected them so they became purple. Um, then I darkened up these trees that had a bit of sun hitting them. So that's what that layer is doing. It's just a curves layer, bringing down the highlights. Then this is where I took it. Um, I don't do a lot of this anymore, but at the time I was always taking my images into Camera Raw to do my color changes. And that makes a really, really extreme change. So let's see if we can see what that Camera Raw filter is doing. So this is just the same settings that you would find in Lightroom, for example. So this is what it looks like. And yeah, I've played with things quite a lot to get that result. So that is the before and after. It's obviously a lot warmer now, a lot more inviting. It's less blue and green. And so I think that makes a huge difference. Then I just affected those colors a little bit more just to make the purples a bit more darker. Then I did some dodge and burning, which you probably can't even see. You can mostly see that happening on the dress. And that just gives her a bit more dimension as well. Then I did my toning, but ultimately, and I did that in a lot of layers, as I always do, but ultimately that is just adding a bit more contrast, really, and changing those colors ever so slightly. 
And then I did something that I will always regret for this image. And I don't usually like to go back and edit them once they're done, once they're out in the world. So I've just had to live with this mistake forever and ever. But basically I took this color layer here and I painted it in to the layer. So now you'll see that the top is just as warm as the bottom, whereas before it wasn't. And this, it, it, I don't know, it just makes it look a little bit blurry to me. It's, it's always bothered me ever since I did it. So that was probably my one mistake with this image, but otherwise that is it done. So look, as you can tell, I go to a lot of effort in my images and that is not necessary. This can be done with far less effort. It's just that I get so sucked into the process and so immersed in the process of creating that I add all these extra little touches that aren't really necessary because I just enjoy the process of creating. That's purely it. And so I have this image on my website. It gets a lot of attention around September when it's jacaranda season because everyone obviously wants to go out and photograph it and they want to know the best places to photograph it. If you enjoy these tutorials, you're welcome to come join me inside my course, Exposing Illusions, where I'll teach you how to create your own interesting artworks just like this one. I can't tell you how fun and rewarding it is to create this kind of art. It's my absolute favorite thing. Otherwise, see you again real soon. Happy creating. Bye.